we're here to solve this challenging Sudoku puzzle I wrote called Gridlocked. There are a few different ways to maybe make initial progress, but there was one key sticking point that was hidden at the start and something that hopefully solvers were able to discover and see um, the, the way it was hidden in the initial solving pattern. I'll just give some examples of things people may have tried before potentially stumbling into that uh, theme. At least in my standard notation style, I would probably have marked in um, these notes. I don't think I would have done anything with the eights except up here. There are, looks like no other clear repeats that do things. There's some interesting stuff about the sevens. This isn't a very typical pattern, but it's something I just like to highlight. It's something that always looks to me when I see L shapes where I've got a digit can go in one of three spaces. There's a kind of step I look at, which is does this kind of an intersection point cause trouble? And it turns out it's actually the case in this puzzle that there is a limitation like the sevens can't go in the, the big uh, center points of these L groups because if they did, and I'll show you why in a second, uh, if I put a 7 in here, I put a 7 in here, put a 7 in here, and now there's no space for a 7 in that box. And so um, you can sometimes, when you see a pattern, mentally, like what's in green, put in that kind of space in the grid. But that, that also won't get you very far right now. It's useful later on, actually, but it's useless at this moment. I normally track positive information, so other solvers may have tracked... Um, uh, negative information is to say like digits that can be remaining in cells. So another way some people will look at this grid early on is to see that there are four particular cells that are pretty um, plentiful in the digits they see. They're in this crook where they're in a box of three cells. They're near this, this bend of another L shape, but they see four in row, four in column, and one more. And you can sometimes look at those kinds of spaces for naked singles. In this case, there aren't any naked singles to find, but there are three pairs, if I'm remembering right, and there is a larger option up there. So again, those don't exactly clue you into what to look at, except they may finally get you interested in the second column, the fifth column, and the eighth column. And the theme for this puzzle is revealed by two digits, and they're placed symmetrically. And there are the, these three sixes and these three nines, and the way this works out is that in row three and in row seven, there are two unique cells that uh, the last six can go into, and those will form an X-wing pattern. And in forming that pattern, let me show you what that means. One of these cells in red and one of these other cells in red will be a six, which means none of these cells can be a six, none of these cells can be a six, none of these cells extending out can be a six. And uh, one thing it means actually very quickly is that in the center column, the six is not in the middle of this box, it's going to be in the left or right columns, and we get a sure six there. The other parallel thing to observe, though, is there's a X-wing also on the nines. It's in columns two and five, as opposed to columns five and eight. So in these cells, uh, we're going to get uh, a nine in the left or right, and on the bottom, a nine in the left or right. And again, nine can't be in cells like this, can't be in cells like this. So there are ways we can handle this, but an interesting thing, which is my goal in setting up this theme, is if you have two X-wings in a puzzle and they overlap in one of the columns or rows that they're using, they form a pair. And so the intended star of the puzzle was to recognize a 6-9 pair forced by X-wings that put in the 6-9, which put in these 6-9 uh, uh, digits. There's other clues you put in the grid, like this is a lone space for the other six in those boxes, lone space for the other nines in these boxes. And I think this is the starting part of the puzzle. Once you see both of these, you fill in the center box pretty cleanly with the six nines. So now we have one, three, four left in this vertical space, um, something like this, if we put in all the notes. And that now actually on the bottom starts to give some key limitations. There's a four just over here. There's a one only left in the cell. Um, there looks to be something like a three in all of these cells. But after I place in this one, let's come back to thinking about six and nine. Where is the last space for a six and nine in these cells? We have one right here, and there aren't any more in that column, and there aren't any more in this bottom row. So the last space for six and nine is here, which actually gives us just one spot for a four, one spot for a three. You have a two five coming up. Last digit up top here is an eight. We have two, six, and nine for this column. The two is here, the six, nine is there. The last digit in this space are three, five, three, five. 
I think this, this notation gets us uh, farther into the grid. Um, let's just see if in the digits we just placed we have others we can make progress with. I can mark um, that this cell up here is a 4-5. I can mark this cell down here is, actually what is this? Is this now? I think what I can do is actually find a look at the sevens. We've talked about sevens before, and so I have a seven down, a seven here, which puts a seven note in the space, and we put a seven, which puts a seven, which puts a seven, puts a seven. We're dodging the center of those L shapes, and so that gets us to this spot. Um, this bottom row has a two five left to place. That's just a unique two five, unique two five. This five comes up to the top and forces a four, so we have all the fours in the grid, we get a three five up top. We have uh, some more things to place in here and I had marked at the start that this was a potential one five uh, cell. It's now actually a naked single because the five's been placed. The only digit left that's valid for this is a one. And that puts the uh, last potential one in those cells in this box. We still have two five and four coming up this column, but this is the last place for a four. And this is the last place for a four, which pushes up the nine. Once this nine is placed, the X-wing takes over, nine over there, six down here, six over here. And clear out these cells just uh, to be able to see them more readily. We have another three, five coming across. The six places a nine, nine, six, six. Places a nine, this is the last spot for a one. Down here, this is a six, and we have a two eight left to go. We have a one coming up in one of these cells, but you'll see that in this row, the one has to be on the left, the eight has to be here. That now forces an eight to be just in these two cells up above, and that puts an eight here and a two here. So we get rid of this two. This bottom, uh, sorry, this top corner now is just one spot for the two, which goes over to here. This box is just one spot for the two, which puts in this two. So now the five and eight are uniquely determined. This gives us a five, three, gives us a three. This is the last five, this is the last eight. For those spaces, three, five, we have a one and a two left to go here. And that two is below, the one is above, one with three, three with five, five and eight. And we finish the puzzle. Um, you know, hopefully, while it had a tricky starting step, and with a lot of my uh, more challenging Sudoku puzzles, I try to make the starting step almost have to be found. In this case, I think you could place the seven without needing to get any other digit first. But looking at the sixes will get you one six if you spot that X wing. Looking at the nines will give you one digit if you spot that, which gives you this nine. But critically, you need to see both of those. And with that pattern hidden somewhat symmetrically, seeing the six nine pair in these orange cells that then force these cells get you a lot of real estate in the bottom. You eventually place a one with a six nine to give you the rest of these cells. You get these in and you finally work around the grid. So it's got some amount of work to it, but hopefully you got a sense from the setting of how I was hiding uh, a tricky step at the start to challenge your skills. And if you found it on your own, congratulations. It's a really uh, a challenging puzzle and a great observation if you're able to do it. So we'll see you again soon.